Okay, let's talk about proportions first or the relationship and harmony between your different design elements. Now, the reason I want to talk about proportions first is because I see them as the base of your design. You've got to have good proportions in order to have a, a good design. If your proportions are messed up, you can keep adding shapes to it and details, but it's not really going to fix anything. In my opinion, at that point, you're basically just polishing up a piece of crap. Okay, so the way I look at proportions is basically in two different ways. I look at proportions in terms of being even and uneven. So with even proportions, we might have, let's say, this 50-50 split, right? Or this bar divided up into equal thirds. And with uneven proportions, we might have something more like this, where this is, what is it, 80-20 uh, split? And this could also be a, um, you know, 70-30 or 60-40. Now, I think it's important to say that I don't think either of these is right or wrong. It's about when to use them. So let's look at what each does. So with even proportions, things tend to get a little bit um, boring. But another thing you get with even proportions is for your designs to look quite formal. So there's a formality to it. Now, with uneven proportions, your designs tend to look a lot more dynamic. Dynamic. Yes, I can still write. But there's also a chance, if you overdo it, for your designs to become a little bit chaotic. So that's something to keep in mind as well. So let's have a look at some examples to show you what I mean. Okay, so let's say we have two paths with trees, right? One of them is in an actual forest, and the other one is a path with trees that leads up to some fancy courtyard or palace or something like that. Now, it's not difficult to see which one of these is which, right? I mean, obviously, the top one is the forest and the bottom one is the courtyard entrance, whatever you want to call it. Now, with the forest, we want those uneven proportions. So we want the uneven proportions between our shapes in our trees to show... The organic nature of it and not only in the shapes but also in the way they're spaced out so the spacing would also be irregular and uneven to show off that organic nature but in the case of the courtyard path we might actually want to decide okay maybe we actually do want to get more even proportions to create that sense of formality as well in the shapes as in the spacing between the trees so it's really about knowing the effect that your proportions have and then making a conscious decision on what you want to use. So in the previous chapter, we talked about this boring looking professor with a suitcase, right? So if we were to design a suitcase for this professor, I might actually say, okay, I'm going to put that flappy thing right in the middle of the case. And then in the middle of that, I'm going to put the buckle thing or whatever you want to call it. So now we get a suitcase with very evenly spread proportions, which looks quite dull and formal, but in the case of this boring professor, that might actually just work. Now, let's apply that same principle to a weapon. So let's say I have this back part of the weapon here, the shooty part, I don't know what you call that. And then at the front, I create um, a barrel. And then below here, we have the handle, which I put nicely in the middle of this as well and then at the very front let's say we add a sort of muzzle thing to it you can use your imagination now this looks terrible right um, for a weapon proportions like this just don't work the equal distribution of the proportions throughout this weapon just doesn't look pleasing so let's take this gun move it down and mess with the proportions a little bit so I might say, okay, the barrel is actually going to be a lot longer. And then that shooting part thingy in the back is going to be a lot shorter. And then maybe the handle has some big magazine in it or something like that. So we're going to make that a lot longer as well. And then the muzzle at the front might make that smaller and move it off the center line a little bit. So right away, at least to me, this already is looking a lot more interesting. So... Whereas the top example had this very equal split of proportions, like 50-50, 
Here at the bottom, we get a bit more of an interesting dynamic between all of the shapes. So we get a little, sort of a 70, 30 split here, and we get an uneven distribution of proportions along the vertical line as well. So keep thinking about your proportions when you're designing and also when you might want to use which. And something that can greatly help with that is, of course, looking at reference. So with this briefcase, it's actually looking quite formal and maybe a little bit dull too. But that is because it actually has that equally distributed proportions that work for something like a suitcase. Now with this weapon below here, I think it's quite nice the way that the proportions are distributed. It feels almost like in total like a 90-10 split. We got this big body and then we get this muzzle uh, barrel thing at the front. And also like the way it interacts with this clip here and this gray piece here just gives it an interesting overall dynamic and an interesting distribution of proportions. Now it's always good to keep in mind that we're still designing so even when looking at references we have to make our own choices. Now with something like this M4 here if I look at it it seems like I can pretty much split it up into four equal parts. Now that might be realistic but it might not be what I actually want to design myself unless you know the assignment was to design an actual M4. So in this case I might say okay if I had to design something myself, I might actually lengthen this part here. And I probably wouldn't add a split here. But if I had to have a split, maybe I would add it somewhere around here. And then this barrel part at the front can be sort of the same. So now if we had to redo our proportion distribution, it would look something more like this, which I think for me would be a more interesting distribution of proportions. So keep in mind that you're still designing even when looking at proportions. So make your own choices for what works for your project. Let me show you a couple of art examples. And I said this before, but the only reason why I'm showing my own work is because I knew exactly what I intended when I drew it. So it's easy to talk about. So with this first design here, right at the beginning, when I drew the main shape, I made a mistake. I added a dividing line right down the middle here, which basically split up my design into two equal parts. So what I tried to do to fix that was adding a piece here and here to basically give the overall a bit more of an interesting distribution in proportions. Also keep in mind that everything you draw, every element you add to your design adds to your overall proportion. So you have to keep thinking about proportions with everything you add to your design. For example, at first when I drew this, I had a shape, maybe something like this. And I felt that this shape and this shape were competing with each other in order of which one was more dominant. So what I did to try and fix that was add this dividing line here, which basically breaks up this shape into two pieces. Now in hindsight, I think what I could have done better is make that a bit more extreme. So basically adding a line maybe somewhere around here so that we get a little bit more of an interesting dynamic between these two shapes. So with each element I'm adding, I'm thinking how does this relate to the other objects in my scene? So if I add this small um, handle, I might want to offset that with this big shape right here, this big back part, and add a scope that's not the same size as this handle because then those two shapes would compete with each other. So you have to keep comparing the elements in your design and finding for yourself what you think is a pleasing distribution of proportions. In this design, I knew from the very beginning that I wanted to have a soldier with these handgun looking things with huge wings on it. So I knew I was going to have pretty extreme proportions. So when I break this down, I was thinking we have a big shape for the gun because that's an important part. And then we have this huge space that is just a wing. So that was my main distribution of proportions. And then when you keep breaking down your parts, you have to keep thinking about what that does for your proportions. So let's say here at the front of the gun, I have this barrel. And then I have this smaller piece where the scope goes. And then this back part is um, where the hand goes. And that still gives me an interesting 
distribution of proportions. Now, when I keep adding to this, I need to make sure that I don't mess up my proportions, which is very easy to do. So let's say if I want to add something to the barrel, I probably shouldn't add it right here, right? Because now all of a sudden that creates a sort of monotonous feel to the whole thing. So if I add something to, to the barrel, it would probably be somewhere around here to keep some of that open space and keep an interesting distribution. So with this design, I knew the focal point was going to be, you know, that big ass gun wing contraption on his arms. So that has the most intense proportions. On other parts of the design, I added more evenly distributed proportions, like on the back here and on the front, to make sure that they don't start to battle with what I want the focal point to be, which is the gun wing thing. So I purposely added these more even uh, proportions on the body with these pouches to offset the more dynamic proportions of this gun wing thing, which again, I want to be my main point of focus. And with everything you draw, you have to keep in mind those proportions. So even with a leg like this, I'm making sure that the boot doesn't go right in the middle of his leg. So it's more of a 70-30 division right now. And within those pants, I have this pouch here, for example, and I want to make sure that that's not smack in the middle either. So that's placed a little bit above the center line as well. So keep that in mind for every element you add to your design. Now with this guy, if we, let's say, were to break down this gun, um, we basically have this fairly big shape here, and then we get this other shape here, and we end with a more thinner piece with a big square at the bottom. Oh. And each one of these is divided by an even smaller piece. So this gun itself doesn't have that much detail or that interesting shapes. I personally think it works because of the distribution of proportions. Now a good way to think about this in, is thinking in terms of big, medium and small. So for example, we have this big shape here and then we have this, I guess, more medium shape here. And then we end with a smaller piece right here. Um, now you could make this more extreme. You could say, okay, we have this huge shape here. Then we have, let's say, medium shape here. And then we end with something very small. So that's always a nice way of distributing um, your proportions, when, at least when you're trying to add dynamic proportions or uneven proportions. This might be something you want to avoid when doing more evenly spread out proportions. But... I think it's a nice way to keep thinking about big, medium, and small. But I would say don't stick to big, medium, small religiously because, at least for me, when I started to learn about design, it became a bit confusing sometimes where I thought, okay, I have big here, I have medium here, I have small here, but then this is also small. So how does that relate? So sure, keep thinking about variation within your design. So variation with big, medium, and small, but don't think you have to stick to one of each or anything like that. And when we look at our image here, the main focal point is the weapon. So that has the most interesting and dynamic proportions. Now, again, like in the previous image, to offset that, I purposely added these more um, evenly spread out proportions and shapes on the back so that they don't fight too much with what's going on in the weapon at the front, since they already have the same color as well. This is a design I did not too long ago, so it's quite easy to talk about in terms of what my intentions were. So the purpose of this robot was to be quite formal and maybe even a bit dull. It was meant to basically be a handyman robot. So this robot was not meant to be violent or aggressive or anything like that. So I knew from the very beginning I was going to have the proportions be very evenly split out. And I thought it would be interesting to add a bit of character to something that otherwise looked pretty plain or pretty simple. So if we look at the breakdown of the proportions, when we look at the arm, for example, the upper arm and lower arm are the exact same size. And then I made a conscious decision to make sure that all of the tools were basically that same size as well. And then all the parts in between that 
like the shoulder area and the elbow and the hand have a similar sizes as well. So in total we get this equal um, spread proportions that go throughout the whole design. And I tried to stick to that to make sure that there's an overall sense of um, cohesiveness. Always keep in mind your proportions because to me it's one of the, the if not the most important part of your design.